This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Grappler Union Podcast. Javier Plummo alongside Anthony Zito. Our guest today is a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, a man who is a local legend in the Chicago jiu-jitsu scene, and one who needs no real introduction. Pete the Greek, everyone. Enjoy. I need the six minutes. That's what happens in that six minutes. You told me we see any technique that works. Never to limit myself to one style. Open mind. We're not here to take part. We're here to take over. In order to become more peaceful, in order for you to become better, and, and strategize your life. <laughs> Pete the Greek. Finally. Welcome. But I'm only half Greek. The other half is Sicilian. What? Ancient Greece. Nothing wrong with I that. I don't even know about it. I tell the Greeks, I say, hey, you know what? I'm a true Greek. You're only half. <laughs> How do they take that? They get pissed. <laughs> and so, like, I tell them, you know, under Mount Vesuvio and all that, that's where Cyclops are buried and all that. They don't want to hear that. So I tell them I'm a true Greek. I'm half and half. We have Pete the Greek, Brazilian, Sicilian, Hawaiian, kind of Mexican. Yeah, Heinz 57, man. I had no idea. Everyone everyone I always known called you the Greek. I figured it was all Greek. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so at my first belt promotion, my name is Pete Letzos, and my coaches, it was funny because the Brazilians, they told me, you know, Pete, you're going to get promoted. Come to the belt promotion. I went to it, and everyone gets called and promoted, and I didn't get promoted. I said, shit. And six months later, another promotion. I don't get promoted again. And finally, two years later, I show up and, and one of the instructors, Paulo, goes, Pete the Greek. And it stuck <laughs> ever stuck. since. <laughs> and when, when I met the Carlson, he just called me Grego. That means um, Portuguese Greek. And um, it pretty much stuck. And it's pretty cool because Greek people have a history of fighting with uh, pancreation and, and all that stuff. So yeah, no. And it's a name you don't forget. So I'll meet someone once. and uh, you know, It could be anyone. I'll meet someone in Beverly Hills or somewhere fancy, and I'll meet them once, Pete the Greek, and, and they remember. It's like they right, met right. me before almost. Yeah. Like, hey, I met you before. Hey, I, I knew you as Pete the Greek, had no idea what your last name was. Hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm going to change it. My middle name is The. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was your, your cousin, actually. I, I met your cousin, and he messed me up because – so. Uh, Gus uh, used to train Samba with me briefly. Um, had had to stop because of a, a medical issue. How did you get into Samba? Me? That's a long story. But we'll we'll get to that in a second. Here. That's cool. So so Gus comes on in. He wants to try Samba and everything. He goes, Hey, you know, um, one of my cousins does jujitsu. I'm like, Oh, okay. And I'm like, Well, you know, small world. Maybe there's a slim chance I know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he tells me, Yeah, his his name's Peter. Um, he, he, he does jujitsu, you know, I don't, I don't know how good he is or anything. Um, and he says your last name. He goes, you know him? And I go, no, man, I, I never heard of this guy. That's how I feel. When people say my last name, who the fuck is that guy? Right. <laughs> and it was like, it was a couple of weeks later, we were getting to talking and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, uh, you sure you don't know him? He owns a school in Chicago. And I go, what'd you say his name was? And he says it again. And I go. No man, I don't know that name. <laughs> yeah, <I don't laughs> and eventually, I'm eventually, he looks it up. And he's like, he owns Rio Jiu Jitsu. I'm like, Pete the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a guy. It's crazy. His name is Pete Greek, and he owns Kawaii Kimonos. How crazy! Oh wow, is that? he's not even Greek. That's a crazy small his name world. Is Pete, you, you're telling Greek. me you don't own a kimono company? And he owns a kimono company called Kawaii Kimonos. It's a light kimonos people travel with. Right, right, right. So crazy. His name is Pete Greek. You should talk to that man. You see, see if you can get a sponsorship. I, get, I got, or, I got show your roll. They help me out and right stuff, now. and they're gonna make an AP gi for my show your roll's gonna. Yeah, they're gonna make a. They call it a albino preto gi. Be badass for my gym. That'd be nice. Yeah, People want to cool. spend money on gis. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Fuck. this guy right here. I'm a big gi guy. Yeah, so Love like I, I could buy a regular one and people be like, nah, you know, I'm I'm gonna get one on, online. But if I get an albino preto, they're gonna want to buy it. 
for sure. Especially if it's going to be like the T-shirt you're wearing. Yeah, it's that's just going to be like. That's well, they're cool. not doing Rich Like the World. That's a whole other level. That's that's, 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 next level. Level. that's next level. I haven't even sold one shirt, and people people know about it all over the world. How have you not sold one shirt? Not even one, because I gave one to Jocko. I gave one to Glover. I gave one to Bill. And then, like, I lost most of them in the fire. Oh, shit, Because they're Shoyer Wolf shirts. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, there's not too many of them. No. Because you weren't, you, weren't even, you weren't even selling those. Like, no, like, I won't sell them. I keep everything no, for myself. No, you keep everything for right. yourself. Everything I make, I keep for myself. Maybe I give like <laughs> have a couple. I give away like ten. That's it. Small group of people. That's it. You got, hey, you got g- be in giving that away group. the right people though. You you giving away to Glover and, yeah, and Jocko Glover, guys like yeah. that. I'd yeah, say when I go to San Diego, to Glover, Jocko, I gave him to Paul Schreiner. Paul's gonna come to a seminar for me and help me raise some money. My Definitely let me gym, know. I should have better insurance. Let's, let's talk about that, Jim. What happened? Because there's there's not a lot like. Well, so I had a little gym, eight hundred square feet for like seven years. It's, it's, mm-hmm. We all grew it. And then we moved to a 5,000 square footer. Beautiful facility. Awesome very, place. Very, you know, we nice. had the Shoyer Roll open mat and all these cool seminars. Eddie Cummings, Gary Tonin. I remember Gary was supposed to come for two hours seminar. He taught six hours. So it was a really cool place. I actually slept there most of the time. I had a jacuzzi in there. It was badass. And um, so then a waffle place comes in. I was in Mexico because I had a back surgery. And... Um, I was living with Glover, but I just crossed. Glover lived 10 minutes from the border of Mexico. So I right. lived in Mexico and had my own apartment. They're not going to pay apartment in Chicago and Mexico. So I lived over, I was over there and then um, I went back and forth to it. I had a spine surgery from a car accident. Not a big deal. I'm, I don't want to talk about bad shit, but. And I get a call that my place is up in flames. And I'm like, oh. And they call me, well, it's not that bad, but everything was damaged in soot. So it smelled bad, you know, even from my pillow I had there or whatever, blankets, sheets, equipment. Right, just, it all just smells bad. Place, yeah. Yeah. You can't keep it. So as much as it looks cool, you can't really do anything with it. And um, So the mats and everything? Yeah, like, the mats were in soot. You know, like little kids, if they had asthma or something, they could die. So I just, um, most of the neighbors don't care because their their businesses are... Right, tear up some carpet, re- replace some drapes, and they're fine. Yeah, because there's a dentist or it's a, another place, a veterinarian clinic, so people are going there once in a while. But my type of place is we're exercising, so your pores are going to be open. And so we moved temporarily down the street to a hop keto school, and uh, we're doing the best we can over there. But So what happened with the – so you had – you have insurance, obviously. I have insurance. But you had – Fire liability. Fire liability was – So that means if I didn't start the fire, I'm not liable for it. So we're waiting – since they started the fire, right. we so have to wait for them. And that could take – I don't know. how long, right? So in the meantime – yeah, so I can't just be calling up my lawyers, you know, saying, hey, man, when we – you know, so right. step by step. So I'm going to get something. We started a GoFundMe, mm-hmm. and we raised $8,000 in a few weeks – and that's pretty cool and it's wrist lock the fire it's hilarious but it's easy to remember yeah and um a lot of people have been helping now i'm getting donations from people i never even met and but in chicago it's a big city eight thousand dollars ain't gonna get you too far they'll get you some mats right then you gotta do your build out and you gotta get you know all that all so that are stuff. you looking to move completely like, yeah we're the, gone you're not, you're, you're the place is covered in soot yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but is it is the landlord eventually gonna have to do two something million dollar damage oh, to the place wow so with the other businesses they're closed down but if you're a restaurant or something you leave you'll come back but with martial arts or jujitsu yeah. when your students have nowhere to train they're gonna join somewhere else right, right and we have a lot of schools i'm in the city of chicago there's schools i could walk to right. so we lost maybe 30 40 percent along with the polar vortex the new place we moved to doesn't have parking Ugh. so that alone with 30 below zero and, and no parking right the yeah. average wipeout will probably quit you know of course our best people stay but most of the wipeouts you know they're wipeouts they wipeouts need a parking lot yeah people have been training a long time you know they'll, they'll suck it up but someone that's just joining there like especially like parents and stuff yeah. we had a 35 car parking lot now they're they're pulling up to a place but that's all negative stuff we'll fix all that so where are you looking right now where are you looking to same go? neighborhood I'll same find neighborhood something. Yeah. yeah i found a few places and yeah i already know anywhere i teach well i have students so I'm, I'm not even worried about it i know if i was to lose every single person right now i don't even care because as soon as I start teaching, I have a lot more people. All right. So let's talk about let's talk let's talk about 
about your background, how you got into it, and your whole like. Well, jujitsu. I come from. Well, I started doing martial arts as a kid. I used to live over. Well, I did martial arts as a kid in Forest Park, right where we're at. Okay. What was the street from Bishop's Chili? There was a little Taekwondo place. Okay. And um, it was next to where I used to get my ice skates sharpened. Because you played hockey. I played hockey. And uh, my cousin Chris Chester, so yeah, right in his neighborhood. So I did karate over here, but that was whack. They had carpet in there. I hate training at places with carpet. Like the new place I'm teaching out of is carpet. Like I don't like that. So the place like, just smells like carpet. And they're going in there and doing all these forms and stuff. And I wanted to fight and wrestle. And all my cousins were black belts and stuff. And I would just go in there and tackle them. And so I quit at Green Belt. The Taekwondo it was it was fun. The belt promotion is fun and that stuff. Yeah. Like the coolest part of Taekwondo is breaking the boards. <laughs> you know, I'd show up for that day, and then the coach would punish me for not being there. For the not other being days. there, I'm like, right. look, you know, I just want to break some boards. You're just yelling at me the whole time. I just want to break some boards. Right. And so, you know, they eventually they told me I wasn't allowed back because I just showed up for the belt promotion and kind of. You know, I was like, nah, these Taekwondo kids, they're not that tough anyways. You know, I was playing real sports and stuff. And mm -hmm. by the time I was like nine, ten years old, I was playing other sports. And then I started playing ice hockey. And you'd meet a lot of tough kids in hockey. They got their agility. They're mean. They were like hazing people and stuff. They're mean kids. And I get in the hockey place and you get tough. And you get your agility side to side. So from hockey... I played baseball, too. I was a good pitcher. I was throwing 85 miles an hour at 15. Jeez. So I was really good at baseball. I had all the colleges looking at me and stuff. But baseball is so boring because you pitch, and then you're off for a week. And what are you supposed to do? Sit there and watch your friends play baseball? It's so boring. So I watched the UFC with my mom. I was like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm doing that. And Man, I just waited. Was that, was that UFC 1? UFC two, three? 1. Yeah. I was, that's I the watched one that gets Hoist them all. Gracie. I think it was like 93, like November something. I watched it. We got on pay-per-view. I was like, I'm not doing nothing else. Like, those guys are cool. I want to be like that. So every day I checked the yellow pages, and there'd be a, there'd be a listing at the top, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But then you look at the bottom, and it would, like, redirect you to, like, some Taekwondo score, some Judo score. What the hell? I want to do Jiu-Jitsu. So I I went to Proviso. Well, first I went to Fenwick over here. I played hockey over there. But it was too far from my house, so I went to Proviso after that. And from there I went to Montini, which is a wrestling school. Like, all these Izzy-style wrestling, they all come from. Yeah, Montini's really good. Mont and they had a good baseball team there, so I played baseball over there for one year. And... um I knew it. I just liked jiu-jitsu way more than all this. These kids were top-level wrestlers, top-level baseball, and jiu-jitsu is way cooler. I was traveling, doing the Pan Ams in Miami and stuff. And What school did you find? Carlson Gracie. So the wrestlers in Montini, I think I was like 15, I was 16 years old. Somewhere, one of my high school I went to, one of the wrestlers told me, look, you got to try jiu-jitsu, and they sent me to Bloomingdale. Junior, Carlson Gracie and I went Jr. To junior and I, well, I went over there and Jeff Neal was teaching. Yeah. And I go in there for one class and I lied. I wore my friend's headgear. I'm like, yeah, I've been wrestling my whole life. I want to spar. <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> I was only 15. Man, that, that was uh, that was Mike Figueroa's joint, Bloomingdale Martial Arts Academy. What was his name? Right Mike off. Castellano. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, Ca it, it was Castellano. I'm sorry. Castellano. Figueroa. Yeah. yeah I so, misremembered there. Yeah, so they go over there. I'm 15. I remember I was driving my mom's car. I had to take her car. I was only 15. I lived a little far. Yeah, that was I, a hell of a drive, man. I would drive from 15 years old just to do jiu-jitsu. I'd show up there, and I was like, man, where are these Brazilians at? <laughs> and they're like, no, no, you got to train over here in Bloomingdale. I was like, no, no, no. I'm like, I know there's some Brazilians around. I, I smell it. <laughs> like, there's Hoyt Gracie. I'm like, no, these Gracie are Brazilian. Where are these guys? And then one of the guys told me, like, if you want to get really good, you got to go downtown to Gold's Gym. Boom, I drove my mom's car downtown, and that was it. See, like, Dennis Rodman was working out there at the time. That's when the Bulls were on fire. It was 96. And um, right away, Junior was in there. I was like, that's the Gracie. I'm like, I, I want to make friends with him. I'm like, I don't want to meet the king. of the. You know, I want to meet the ace. And so right away, I started giving Junior rides, like, 
Junior wasn't driving at that point. He just moved from Rio de Janeiro to like Humboldt Park. It was like different transition. You go from like beaches to like urban. So I was a driver. I was like, okay, Junior, where do you want to go? I was picking him up everywhere and just drive him, drive him, drive him. And in return, he'd, he'd let me train, you know, when that without paying. And I'd be there all day. And then people would always yell at me at the gym, like, why are you doing this? You should be going to college and, and this and that. I'm like, you're just angry at your life. Your life sucks. Because I'm Greek. Like, I already seen people making money. Like, I have friends. Like, my friend has Yoke Cafe. He makes a lot of money. He makes, like, $60,000 in right. a couple of days. Greeks owning restaurants. Big surprise. Yeah, I mean, so, like, <laughs> money to me is not a big deal. I don't have any money, but I've seen it growing up. So, you can't really, like, con me into, like, show me your BMW. I don't care. And that's basically it. So... So you I go in there and I, I'm like, I like jujitsu. I don't care if there's no money in it. I don't care. You know, my, my friend's Brazilian, didn't even have a car. I'm like, I want to be like him. And so <laughs> I just train, 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 train. And then eventually we're training every single day. And Junior become my best friend. And I'm probably about like 17 years old at that point. And then some guy comes at a gym, start talking about there's a Pan Am champ. They start, well, because Junior had. Had us in Chicago, but then you had Henzo in New York. Right, right. There's a few others. Henzo in your health in yeah. San Francisco. You would always hear stories. Like, people would come in, like, like Henzo has this kid, Matt Sarah, you know, so I always train, like, who is this kid? You know, they would come in, like, they're talking about these Penn brothers, Hawaiian brothers are so tough. You know, we always train. Like, we never seen them. There's no internet right, or anything. No, yeah. You just keep training, like, like, screw that. Like, I'm going to be good like them. Like, keep training training no one ever saw anyone we didn't see any videos didn't see anything so we just yeah we were kind of primitive i just wonder it's a, it's a, it's amazing that 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 would get out there like there was no internet at the time Nothing and it's just there. like the, the well, stories of people from hawaii and from new york and just 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 sprinkle that through, through that land up in chicago I mean, you know back in the day so you heard I would only hear of people through like message boards and and things like that i mean we we had the start of the internet, like yeah. on AOL and, and things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know, uh, bulletin board systems and things like that. Right. But yeah, everything either was through message boards mm -hmm. or magazine articles. Yeah. We would train against ghosts. We just hear about these people. Like, yeah, health got a guy, you know, you got to keep training. Or we hear about like Javier Vasquez. He was from, he was like in San Diego from Rodrigo Madero. Like, oh, there's this Cuban kid. He's a good wrestler. You know, mm -hmm. you, you just have to picture this kid. Like, no, I'm going to be better than him. You keep training. <laughs> And then eventually they had the Pan Ams, and then we all get to finally meet each other. We meet each other in the line because the lines are so damn long and so unorganized. You'd be in line for eight, ten hours. So you just make friends with people. And um, all those same people, like the ones that loved it back then are the ones that love it now. It's all the same people. It's Eddie Bravo, all the people. Yeah, it's I the guess. same people, Danaher, all the same people, the Pens. Like the ones that loved it then, they still love it because once you get the fever, you got it. The only way is if you die or something. There's no way. Once you got it, you got it. And I've seen that old picture of uh, it's you and Eddie Bravo, Lovato's there. Um, that was from the Ultimate Fighter 1. Okay. Okay. That was, um, so that was me years and Carlson later. went over there. It was when Stefan Bonner, they had actually saved the UFC at that point. The UFC was dying at that point until. Bonner okay. versus yeah. uh, Griffin. Griffin. It, was, it was dying. No one wanted to watch that. And then once that came, but that was right before then. Okay. And then Mark Coleman was training there. And there was a, it was a great time, man. That was one of the best open mats ever. Cobra Kai at that point. See, I was living in Brazil. But Cobra Kai at that point was a gym that was as good as Brazil in the United States. This is in Vegas, right? In Vegas. Yeah. Just, just for the couple of listeners Joe that may Daddy not know. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Cobra Kai is a really really well-known gym in Vegas, not just the enemy gym in Karate Kid. No, no. It's a, it's a, it was a well-known gym, and at that point in time, I had been in Brazil, so I was used to that type of training, but I'd never seen that in the United States. Really intense, really, it was really technical. really intense, Vegas. I was like, wow, this place is cool. And then right away, I trained there um, on my second day. Lame is like, you want to move here? Usually when I train place, I don't say who I am back in the day. I would just go to their training. What's your name? Oh, Pete. It'd be like usually no gi I would like to train. See, no belt. And then I would like wrist lock people and shit. And then I'd be like, the next day, like, you're Pete from the internet? I'm like, no, nah, I'm Pete the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> and right away, I get like a job the next day. They're like, hey, you want to move here? That's anywhere I train. Like, 
And over there in Vegas is cool because most of the guys are working at the strip club right next door. It was like Cheetahs. So they would make 300 bucks on the weekend doing nothing and teach the girls. Working some security like? Yeah, I was working some security, teach the girls um, self-defense. The girls would pay a lot of money. And they had like a buffet over there real cheap, like eight bucks a day. <laughs> and so everyone was moving go. to Vegas. Glover moved there. It was um, it was a fun time. Is that where you met Glover? Or you know him no, already. Glover, I know him from from forever. Me and Glover are like friends since like birth or something. That shit's crazy. Where did you meet? Okay, because he does deep half cry, do over unders. So like, it's really weird. Like when you when you do moves and one move goes into another move and you meet that person, it's like you know them forever. It's fucked up. Like he does deep half guard. Right, right. So when you sweep someone in deep half guard, you end up in my favorite move. It's the over under guard pass. Right. So it's just weird. Like, our moves just go together. Cancel each other out, kind of? We just go, like, his move sweeps into my move. So it's really weird. So when you meet people, like, Galval takes the bags. So and my over-under takes the... It's really weird. And then Tony does... A lot of my best friends do, like, a certain move. And my friend Tony Sousa did a Peruvian necktie. Galval freaking takes the back. Is D'Souza still, like... Is, oh, he's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know him by reputation. Never actually had a chance to meet him or train he's with him. He's a coach of Sinistro. Sinistro's over there now with Alliance. Okay. But that's his best guy. Right. Yeah. I wasn't sure if he was even still in the States. I, I thought... No, he, Tony D'Souza lives in Peru in the Yeah, jungle. that's... There we go. He's over there. Yeah, Tony's cool. He's the first high-level wrestler to get a black belt in jiu-jitsu. See, until him, most wrestlers were just always wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And Tony was able to actually play the guard. Most wrestlers will never play the guard. Hmm. Ever. Like, you're not going to be like, oh, he's a wrestler. He got a great guard. <laughs> Doesn't happen, huh? No, but with him, he was the first one right. to learn the guard. Right. And he trained with all those good guys back in the day, like Tito Ortiz. And so his stuff is battle tested. So he's cool. And. That's one of my best friends. So a lot of my friends are like specialists. Fredson. Pai Zhao. He, he taught me a lot of wrist locks. But we've been away for so long from each other. Like our Waldo team hasn't even seen each other together since like maybe 2002. So that's already 17 years. Right. So a lot of them veered off picking a special move, but. I kept I kept with that move so the wrist lock. Yeah, it's interesting to see because they've been doing wrist locks too. But I'm over here in Chicago, so it's like my own cave. So I I develop my own stuff. Like any example, like if you live in California, anything you do gets learned immediately. Because mm -hmm. it's so many gyms. There's so, so much. many. I go to an open mat, like I come up with something. Everyone already knows it. Like in a week. But over here, I could come up with stuff and no one even knows it and just keep getting better at it, better at it, better at it. And then when I see them, like, holy shit, how'd you do it? It's kind of like being in a cave. Chicago is pretty much like being in a cave. So it's pretty cool. It keeps me fresh. So between Glover and, and being like over here in solitude, it's pretty cool, my jiu jitsu. So you like, you adopted the wrist locks just just by trial and error? Or just did someone, because someone, yeah, friends, they, they well, Oswaldo, was a, Oswaldo I was my coach. Yeah. In Brazil, well, first, Carlson, I normally don't jump shit, but Carlson's team had had money issues. They didn't want to pay him money. That's normal. You know, in the fight world, you know, you, you have two types of coaches. You have ones that make fighters and ones that buy fighters. And so Carlson's fighter left for money. So I went to, I trained at every gym in Rio. Probably there's about 80 of them. And... The one where the people trained the hardest and had the least amount of money was Oswaldo Alves. And that's where I made friends with Galvao and Fredson. But Fredson was the best out of most. Fredson was number one, Jack Ray was number two. And the rest of us were just trying to be as good as them. Right. They were too good. Like, Jack Ray was too good. When he was like a brown belt, purple belt, oh, my God. He's just scary to go against this guy because he'll try and slam you. He has good judo. Good judo, yeah. So these other jiu-jitsu people aren't really scary because they're going to pull guard and try and sweep you. This guy is going to try and throw you on your head. So super scary. And and Fredson was little. Fredson would always try to wrist lock us. So the whole time, you know, we're getting wrist locked and stuff. And Oswaldo, I think he knows the wrist locks. You can learn any move you want. You just got to specialize. Anything you want to do, you can do. That's just cool about jiu-jitsu. Like, 
I, I like doing wrist locks. I didn't know I was that good at them until I roll with people. And they're and like, then what I the hell is them, that? I catch right. them with that. Like, yeah. they're not ready for it. And so little by little, you're catching more and more and more and more, especially in the United States. Like, at his Waldos, you weren't catching no one in a wrist lock. There's no way. Because they're all aware of it. Like, trying wrist lock Galvan is not going to be easy. Trying wrist lock Jack Ray, not going to be easy. Trying wrist lock Fredson, not going to be easy. Trying wrist lock Bibiano, those are our main guys. You're not going to wrist lock them. But regular people, you will be able to wrist lock at least once. And so, um... I had my friend Splurgio. He's a black belt in San Diego. From uh, he's really really good. His his coach is really badass. It's um, Barrett Yoshida, and he's he's one of the best tattoo artists. And he drew my this guy Rusak the World. Oh, which is me. Nice. And yeah, so that's that's Sergio Hernandez, right? Yeah, he's badass. Yeah. He does like inverted guard. He does yeah, donkey he does guard. Some w very weird stuff. Like cool weird yeah, yeah. stuff. He does donkey guard like. I, Donkey guard is actually safer to pull on the street than a regular full guard. If you want to jump up to someone full guard, you might land on your back and hurt yourself. Donkey guard, you got at least got your hands on the floor, you know. And then if you pull like half donkey guard, that's pretty much like an Imanari roll or something. It's like a leg. Right, lock. you're jumping right on a knee bar. Or and if you miss up. it, you're just up on your hands. But if you jump full guard on the street, you could die. Right. Yeah, because you're gonna get right. slammed on your back or head. You know, so like donkey guard, at least like you go up, you know, you might get a little gravel on your hands or something. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not a big donkey guarder, but, you know, I look at more self-defense aspect. From the donkey guard that Glover does, he can kick someone in the face too, just like a mule. Like you, I learned that in Greece. Like the first thing you learn living in my damn village is don't stand behind a mule or a donkey because you might get kicked. Of course. Yeah, that's a makes fucking sense. way to die there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, with that type of stuff, you know, Glover is my friend. Glover... Glover keeps me fresh. Like, example, if I didn't have Glover in my life, he's like my number three best friend or number four. I'd have to travel around, like, so much to learn. It'd be a pain in the ass. So with Glover, he's insane. I could just hang out with him for a couple of weeks. Pick and, up all the news. And he's, and he's learning all the new stuff, and he's not even studying no one else. He's just coming up with it because he's having fun. So when I go with Glover, I, like, become a teenager again. <laughs> And then I teach him more about martial arts. He teaches me more about like, having fun with jiu-jitsu. And then I visit Atos, Galvao. Like, you know, I stay mostly in San Diego when I'm not here. And I got Higgin Machado over there. Higgin's good just for, like, life lessons. Higgin's like Hollywood's, he's like Hollywood's hero. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of famous <laughs> names training with Higgin these days. No, he's, he's like their big brother. He just, <laughs> you see, like, the guy in Hollywood, and Higgin's sitting down like, listen, my brother. And they're listening to him and giving him valuable Brazilian life lessons. No, he's right? telling him, he's like, We yeah. will go to Rio de Janeiro. And and this is my friend Pete. And it's a cool time. Hegan's cool. He's like Jiu Jitsu's big brother. When I'm around him, I feel like I'm around Carlson. Uh, they're pretty connected. They're like, with the Gracies, a lot of them are a little bit different. But Hegan and Carlson are like big spirits. They're like ready to like give you a big hug. The other one's like, I don't know. But he'll give you a big ass hug, and Hegan's cool, and you got Eric Paulson, he's cool. All these people, we got Jiu Jitsu. Thank God, you know, I find this cool stuff. And then, you know, I'm Greek, people always worry about money. Like, well, if you're so cool, why aren't you rich? Yeah. So <laughs> that's the thing with Jiu Jitsu and stuff. You know, there's only a few people making money. If I was, if I was a world class plumber, I'd be a millionaire. World class jujitsu, you know, you're still, you're still scraping by, and hopefully, you know, through podcasts like this and and others and and more events, it'll be easier for people to make a living. Yeah, I think of, I think things are coming along. You know, like professional jujitsu wasn't a thing at all when you started. Like the only path, the only path into making money back then was really you're either gonna own a school and do seminars and stuff like that, and uh -huh. and hopefully you know scrape on by, so or you're tough. gonna get into the UFC. Nice. You know, th those were your options back then, man. Right. Yeah. Still not too many options, but you got to make the best of it. You know, I got people trained two or three years and they're complaining they don't have money and this and that. And it's just, you know, this type of lifestyle, you got to, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. There's implosions all the time. Schools implode all the time. They explode and they implode. And, and it's always going to be the same story. So you always got to be ready. You know, retraction, 
expansion, all that stuff. It's all the same. Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu. And if you're in it for the money, God bless. But I think most of the people successful are doing it out of love because there's no way. I mean, you're spending most of your nights in the gym, your afternoons. You're going to be tired all the time. Your weekends, you're going to want to sleep. You know, it's not it's not a life for, for regular people. Regular people, you know, they're, they're holding their energy in all week, and on the weekend, they're ready to explode. Right. With jiu-jitsu, the weekend comes, oh, okay, I, I feel like, oh, I can get some stuff done. It's the weekend. <laughs> I'm going to relax a little bit. Right. But regular people, no, it's the weekend comes, they're like, ah, kamikaze. Right. Yeah, you definitely, through training all week, you're definitely <laughs> tired by on the fire, weekends. By Friday, I'm like, oh. yeah, speak for yourself. Oh, except on it. It's got trains every day. Yeah, so, it, hey, that's the thing. You can train every day. That, that's great. You know, you just got to do what makes you happy. Right. And I, I still train. And How's your training going? Good? I do all types of stuff. I just do whatever. Like, right now, I had my back surgery, so I can't really do my back, but I do other stuff. There's always something you can do. Mm-hmm. If there's nothing you could do, go read a book or something. Do something. Yeah. So, yeah, study the jiu-jitsu. There's something yeah. you could do. I study at least an hour a day on uh, on the YouTube. You know, I study in my sleep. Who's, your, who's, your, who's the fighter you like to watch? Well, I start off, I tell people, if you want to learn, you should start off watching highlights. Start watching, you know, if you want to do nogi, start watching ADCC highlights. Start watching from the most recent down. Yeah. And pick out fighters you like. Stylistically, stylistically right? Yeah, they yeah. pick out someone you like, and then from there, study that person. That's how I study. I don't, I don't really watch the instructionals too much, unless it's already someone I'm studying. But still, even the instructional, I don't know. I, don't, I watch the highlights, and I pick up maybe, like, my whole goal is to pick up one move. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch the same highlight a hundred different times. Maybe I'll pick up a hundred different moves. But one highlight, I get one move. Any more than that is too much. So if I pick up something dope, I got it. And usually off any highlight, I can pick up one cool move no matter what. Yeah. And to me, that's a lot better than than picking up some instructional. Because you've been doing battle tested. Yeah. 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 It's true. One move. You know, you're just like, okay, I'm going to watch highlights. Gordon Ryan. ADCC. I'll pick up one move. That's enough to practice. And then when I got that move down, I'll pick another one. Like we even study move. We study stuff in our sleep. If I want to study the Kimura, I'll just put Kimura trap, put it on, put on a playlist and put it in my sleep. That's another way to learn too, is even while you're sleeping, play it. So you have headphones on? Nah, just, just play it. Play it on the just on the on. And then you'll learn it and play something. Pick one move and just play it for like six weeks. Now you so if you've got like a DVD or or, or, or a digital download or something like that, you just leave it playing in the background. Or you YouTube, keep like a single thing on, a play, on loop playlist or? on okay. YouTube of one thing. Is it an you instructional? Want to learn Galvao, watch Galvao. I, put playlist that's and it. leave it on for six weeks. It's interesting, man. And then you, and that's why I always got good was I become the person I'm studying. Like when I'm around Carlson, I became Carlson. When I was around Oswaldo, I become Carlos. I become uh, Oswaldo. Because if you try to, ch- even when like when you go out to eat with them, if they order something, I just say, I, I want the same thing. Are you kidding me? Because they get <laughs> mad. Like you order <laughs> with health. <laughs> health crazy, I want to eat with him. Why would he get We were eating with this kid. He was like, I can't eat this. It's not, um. I don't know, and I was like, shut up, motherfucker, you gotta eat that shit. It's the best, it's a steak sandwich, BB2 goes, eat that, eat that. And he made him eat it, and the kid was <laughs> stupid just for, like, trying to order, like, Alf Gracie's ordering you food, just let him order, dumbass. Right. <laughs> like, that's what I learned in jiu-jitsu when you're around these people. Like, I went to India, I trained kushti with the wrestlers and stuff. Wait, and wait, wait, when, when was that? That's awesome, man. I've been there a few times. Like, my friend created yoga, their family, um, Patabi Joyce. Padabi Joyce started Ashtanga Yoga, Power Yoga. It was all created from Jiu-Jitsu. Yoga is basically Jiu-Jitsu by, by yourself. Like, you're not doing yoga unless you're beat up from, like, combat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what comes first? You know, the chicken or the egg? The yoga comes after. <laughs> like, no one gets like that unless they're beaten down. And so... so using it as a form yeah, of recovery? Yeah, they told me. Yeah, they told me, like, the yoga comes from old wrestlers. Like, these guys couldn't train, so they started, like, doing the positions by themselves. 
And so, but the yoga people don't want to admit that. That's what the wrestlers say. It always goes back and forth. And that's pretty cool. I travel everywhere there's combat. I got to go every place. That's why I've been to Amsterdam over there. They got the kickboxing. I got Rob Kamen. He's one of my best friends. Kamen's awesome. He's cool. And I got their buddies are at the Dutch kickboxers from, from a Giro gym. And you got Jose Aldo training over there. And, and you know, they're doing the, the liver shot with the low kick. Like, that's their bread and butter. And I've been training guys in Mexico. They're really good. They're fighting in Combat Americas. Like they take they take boxing serious in Mexico, like pretty serious. Even like the girls, like like a girl fourteen years old knows a lot about boxing just from watching it with mm -hmm. her dad in Mexico. So like it's like the boxing is pretty damn serious in Mexico. So I have a bunch of students over there. I've been training because when I got injured, I didn't want to be around jujitsu all the time. It's just too dangerous. You know, people want to grapple all the time. You're injured. Just and you, back and surgery. you want to grapple, too. I want to grapple, yeah, too. It's, just, it's, not, it's like being in a candy right. shop, and the parents are like, you got diabetes. Sorry, kid, you can't eat. So I was living with Glover, and that's the same thing. Like, Glover wants to train all the time. He, he rests like two or three days. Like, you're not better yet? No, I'm not better. So <laughs> yeah, I just went over back to, surgery. Come on. I went over to Mexico. I made friends with the boxing coaches, and I just stayed in the boxing gym six, seven, eight hours a day watching them train. So that was so cool because, like, making friends with old boxing coaches, they're not trying to do anything either. They're just sitting there, like, playing. Like, it was like hanging out with Carlson. I got my coaches over there, and I got pretty good at just, like, learning learning boxing. It's all combat. Like, the old school boxers don't look at boxing for points. They look at boxing for combat. And so, yeah, I got the, I got the Mexican side. I got the Indian one thing, I wouldn't mind moving to India one day and just mastering yoga. People go there, like this Padabi Joyce at their camp, they pay $1,000 a month. It doesn't include any type of room and board. It's $1,000 a month. And they get 250 people a month, so they're making $250,000 a month. Wow. But people are coming from Switzerland. Right. To take this yoga. To yeah, because yoga. when you get certified by them, you get big money, and, and yoga's big in Switzerland. Hmm. California here maybe not so much but in Switzerland people get paid for that stuff right no I mean like we've had a couple of guys that do yoga on, on the show and you know we've known some guys that have seemingly done well for themselves with it so I can believe that but yeah man that I, I didn't know I didn't know that like yoga I'm, camps I'm big were with that the big yoga. no this is the main one this is Ashtanga yeah. yoga right. this is power yoga these are the people that developed it and so when I got hurt one of my friends said let's go over to um to India, this is a few years ago. He said, I got my bad car. He got hit by drunk drivers. They didn't have insurance. So it's a delicate situation. So I tried healing myself naturally. So I went to, uh, my friend's like, come on over. They got people that can fix you over here. It was really cool. Yoga is like this town I went to is so cool. And this little kid was trying to jump rope. And I didn't know who he was. And I taught him how to jump rope real good. It took me like three or four days. I'm like, keep your elbows in, turn your wrists. Cause he's keeping his elbows out. It's the main thing. When people can't jump rope, they look goofy because their elbows are out. Once you keep it in, flick your wrist, you're good. So I taught the kid that. And then right away, a couple days later, do you know who that boy is? I'm like, no. He's like, his dad owns, you know, this. There's like some huge block with the camp and all that stuff. I'm like, I don't care. So the kid became my friend. And he's seen I was like living in some like stupid hostel. And they're like, look, you can stay in our five-bedroom mansion right next to our house. Just don't let no one in the place. It's yours. Just give us 30 bucks a month for the electricity. So I stayed there a few months. I'm a professional traveler. I, I, I need to talk to you after after the mics are cold <laughs> off here and get some advice. I'm going to be going to Amsterdam soon myself. So Amsterdam is go, go freaking live on one of those boats. Rent one of those boats. What live boat? in a canal. Live, is that right? Is that they the, rent those boats. I had no idea. Like no. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be in a hotel. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's get one of those boats. That sounds like a cool experience. When you're walking, you'll see all these boats in the canal parked. Yeah. And you can just rent them. Yeah. Wow. Huh. They'll Maybe. have numbers on it and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, that's Because they got to cool. pay their slip. Right. Oh, clever. Huh. Yeah, Am I, I'm, Amsterdam's cool. It's expensive, though. Don't think it's cheap. It's not like going to Mexico. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get the you impression. Get the euros. <laughs> yeah. But um, you'll be able to probably pick up some seminars and stuff. I never really went there for jiu-jitsu. I went there for kickboxing. And... Um, you got to check out their kickboxing gyms. They're, they're insane. Yeah, they're like these guys, yeah. 
you know, they've been they've been taking the kickboxing seriously. They went to Thailand and and everything. And Amsterdam's good for the heavyweight kickboxers. They're they're really strong. Like they got big old legs. You're gonna see people with like giant legs over there. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I had legs like that. <laughs> you know, in Chicago, the guys have big arms, but over there, these guys are walking around like yeah, tree trunks. women too. Well, they ride bike everywhere. I mean, like you know, that that's got to be a <laughs> no contributing one steals factor. Steals anything? You can just take a bike and go for a stroll, and then park it, and then. Someone else said, Amsterdam's cool. I like it. It's kind of like Chicago. It's kind of like Chicago. It's like Wicker Park. And, um, you know, we got, you know, Carlson Gracie got a school. Amsterdam's always going to be good for combat sports because they got socialism over there. So when a fighter gets hurt, they don't have to worry so much. Like, right, it's taken care of. It's taken care of. So they're in their training. They're training. You know, someone gets hurt over here, they like one step away from being homeless. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing cool about about Amsterdam is the kickboxers. They're kind of, you know, they're kind of they're not going to make that much money, but they're taken care of. They get they get their basics, right? And and so that's why you have you have a lot of beasts over there. So getting back to India, so India you're there cool, and dude. you're you're learning this yoga. Oh yeah. Well, did, did you did you learn it where you became certified? No, I I had my own. Well, here is the thing. So I showed up. I sh oh man, so I showed up with a couple girls because a couple girls. I don't have. I I lived in Mexico. I didn't have too many like guy friends. Like think about it. Like I had like people at the boxing gym. I'm not gonna hang out with dudes. So I went to the yoga place and I met a couple girls and they're like, "Look, we're all going to India. You got to come with." I'm like, "Nah, I ain't going to that." Like you guys, are gonna, I don't want to go there. So they went and they kept calling me like, "Look, you got to come." There's like it was so cool in India. You get like these. These massages and stuff. It's so cheap over there compared, compared like, to here. Yeah. Look, when, you, when you're from Mexico and you go to India, it's cheap. Just so you get the idea. <laughs> okay. So they're like, so you go there and you get these massages and the girls tell me, please come, come, come. So I show up over there. <laughs> Just get on a plane and go to India. Yeah, because my <laughs> back was broke. You know, like these right, doctors right. are like, you're going to get surgery. I'm like, oh, fuck. And like, you know. And you're trying to avoid surgery. I'm trying surgery. to avoid it. So right. I'm trying everything. I'm trying everything. There's no way I'm just going to get back surgery. So I go to India because India is known for healing. They got good th physical. Th oh, man, they take it seriously. I guarantee you, if I stay there for like 10 years, I could become like a Superman. There's like cows walking on the street. Every other place is some type of like health food or some type of yoga. Or it's really cool. If if you're injured, you'd respect a place like this. Temples everywhere. And and I show up over there and, and, and their instructor, their coach says, I can't stay with them. He's like, you can't stay. You're a guy. You got to stay in another place. I'm okay. like, where? They're like, and they're like, by the way, you can't come to the yoga camp because you're not in a level Oh, you had to have a certain and degree of experience like, already. So what am I supposed to do here, dude? They're like, we don't know. And the girl's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm like, this sucks. And so <laughs> they had um cross stream the yoga place. They had this guy and he rents everyone's scooters. Cause once you get to India, a lot of people rent scooters. Okay. And he rents the scooters and he exchanges the money, like dollars. He's the main dude, and he was, and I had this feeling with him. I saw him like, man, this is the main yoga dude. His name was Shiva. And I go up to him like, look, sir, I'm like, I want to learn yoga. And these, these people, he's like, don't worry. He told me, he's like, I haven't taught a student in years since they start certifying people here. He's like, once they start certifying people, I quit teaching at the temple. Hmm. He's because like, people are just coming here for certifications. They're acting rude and everything. He's like, so I just exchange money. He's like, I'll teach you yoga. I'm like, wow, that's cool. So he would teach me privates every day. I still suck at it, but it was cool. <laughs> and um, and then he's the one, when I did a jump rope with the kid, the kid was like his best friend. because He works for the, for the kid's dad. And then he was just like, I'm in their family. So I can go anytime between April and January and stay for nothing because once January starts, that's when the, the yoga season, season starts. It goes all the way till April, you know, January, February, March, April. There you go. May. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a yoga season. There's a <laughs> yoga season for <laughs> in camps India? in 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 India. Yeah, because that's, that's when like the, the, the best the, weather for it. No, nah, it's or? just like all the people accept outsiders being there too. Hmm. There's like, oh, all right. There's okay. a bunch of like weirdo tourists around. Has yoga Volta. become competitive yet? Is there competitive oh, yoga? That's weird, dude. That's why this guy don't like it because it's like, 
too commercial at that point. Man, like, like people are hoity toity. Oh. Like they're walking with their noses up like this and that. And like the main yoga dude's like a humble like monk. It's like quit acting like that. Hmm. Like to quit walking like that, you know, with your whiteness. Like, do they walk around with Lululemon on? And everything? They're walking around like that, and like the top <laughs> yoga dudes are pissed. Right? They're like, screw that. I'd rather, you know, this like, you know, change money with these people and, and give them scooters because, because the attitude is not from yoga. It's coming from something else. Yeah. Like they're not getting the attitude from the monks in India. Right. I mean, these guys are like humble people and stuff. Hmm. Like there were a lot of yoga people are walking around like. Like they're too tough, so I made I made friends with like the outsiders, like the the black sheep of the yoga, and um, <laughs> black but, sheep yoga does sound like an excellent brand actually. That was pretty good, and the guy taught me nice, and I did um, he's my friend till the end. He's cool. He's cool, and then from there I met the Kushti people. Okay, because you take you don't take taxis over there. You take tuk tuks. Mm-hmm. And like right away with my ears, like right away. They're like, like, oh, you wrestle. Wrestler. Yeah, right away. <laughs> I wanted wrestling. And they take me right away to Kushti. Kushti is the Muslim side, though. The right. Yoga is, is the other side. So they're getting pissed at me. They're like, look, you can't be going to these people. They're going to try and kill you. No like, shit. Like, not even like, <laughs> and like, they'll kill you when you're not looking. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I just want to get buried in mud. I, I wasn't working out much for my back, but. And they would cover me up in mud. Their mud is awesome. They put like turmeric in it and all types of like oils. You feel great. That's that's the, the mud of the arena, or, you or is it some type of in their gym? Yeah, like yeah. it takes them like okay. six months to like create it. Wow. And and then on Fridays they make it like a shrine. It's so cool, and you feel good. You feel like the earth in you. Like you lay down it, and they put it on top of you, and just your head's coming out. Yeah, India's cool, dude. Have not been, but. Definitely yeah. one day. It's not going to be like women or weed or anything like that. Like <laughs> if people are looking to party it up, no. Like it, it's it's so damn hot. When you wake up in the morning, it's like 100 degrees at like 8 a.m. Like you're up. You're going to bed at like by 8 p.m. You're dead tired because it's so hot. And I sweated it all out. You're just hot. Yeah. And I, I taught jujitsu out there. There's jujitsu everywhere. That's how crazy jujitsu is. Like jujitsu is everywhere no gi though right out there or they do in the gi they do a little like they do both like they're behind you know they're behind they're super like it goes like brazil united states europe maybe then asia and then everywhere else is just behind dude yeah like maybe australia got some tough people for sure definitely some good guys come up in the last couple of years Yeah. Australia, but I mean, most other places. Is like Craig Jones from Australia? Craig yeah. Jones, Lachlan, Kit, all yeah. those guys are, yeah. yeah. Australia always, because they used to send the criminals over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how it got started, I guess. <laughs> you know? They do they, do they like that that fact about I, them? I, I, think they le- the, I think that's the thing they least like us bringing up. <laughs> that and probably the shrimp on a Barbie comment. Right. They, used to, <laughs> they, used to, they used to give money if you go over there, too. The, a lot of Greek people in Australia, because Austra- Australia would pay you money. To, to, to move there. Really? Huh. I think they still pay you money. I New Zealand pays money. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of that. But Countries want people be. to move there. Industry. To bring a business with you or just to move there? I don't know exactly. But back in the day, Australia, they would pay people. Hmm. Probably business, you get more money. Probably. I know a lot of people moving to Puerto Rico now with their businesses. Oh, yeah? No taxes. Right. Makes yeah, sense, I guess. Like if you go to Puerto yeah, Rico right now, it's a who's who in the small business world. I got a friend, uh, his, his wife's studying in Puerto Rico to, to become a radiologist because the, the course taking it there is so much, so much less, less expensive, expensive than doing right. it here That's in the smart. States. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but she's living there right now. And yeah, like just off and on weird problems, money transfer issues, mm-hmm. you know, needed to get a car because her previous mode of transportation was like relying on somebody else. And, and like Puerto Rico is not big, but you know, it's, it's also doesn't have the infrastructure for her to get from like one side of the Island to the other right. whenever no she Uber needs to. No Uber out there? Huh? No Uber? I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> they got Uber in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. They, they don't that? have it in Cancun though. Really? No. So you have to use taxis? You or? have to use taxis. Oh. Mm. Got that enforced, huh? Yeah, got enforced. Well, I mean, like they did that in was it Paris had that big big ride against the where, where like the taxi drivers and the Uber right? drivers went to war at, at the airport or some shit. I haven't been to Europe much lately. You know, since the dollar dropped, I used to go to Europe when I was a kid with my dad and stuff. But 
since the dollar dropped and went jujitsu, I just mastered South America. I just go, I just go south. It's cheaper. It's warmer. What was the first time you went to like Rio? Like probably 1999. Damn, that's earlier than I thought, man. 99. So you've been right doing jujitsu right like Hoist. Yeah. Beat, I'm right after Walid beat Hoist. I remember that match so well. He clock choked him. Yep. You know, um, Walid, <laughs> Walid's Walid. Like he's you, cool. You know him. Yeah, I know Ali good. How crazy is he in real life? He comes off as such a character in video. Yeah, those guys stay in Brazil. Like they, You can act crazy in Brazil. In the United States, you can't get away with that much. <laughs> but in Brazil, you get away with it. Like, right. He's like, he's he could be a cop if he wants. He could be whatever he wants for the day. Well, he runs shit over there in, in, in Amazon. I mean, he's literally got he's literally got a, a fight promotion, I know. Uh, uh, jungle, jungle fight. Fights, it's yeah. big. Yeah. It's, it, oh, is it big, huh? Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big, he's big. big they in Brazil. all come out yeah. of him. Because, um, yeah, well, lead. Well, he's cool. He's a vegetarian. Who'd, who'd even think that he's cool? I met him one time. Like, he was at the Arnold's the first time I met him. He came in, he's like, so one of my friends that fought and submitted So He's like, who is this, the Greek? I'm like, no, I'm the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nice to meet you. <laughs> well, yeah, he had his gold chain on, his Rolex, all that stuff. Like, well, he don't play, dude, in Brazil. He's a scary looking dude. Brazil's Brazil, dude. Like, you know, I don't, United States... United States, but in Brazil will lead, will lead. He's from the jungle, dude. He's Palestinian. Yeah, yeah. But he's um he lives in Manaus. Manaus is like it's it's like Rio is more like United States. Manaus is more Manaus. That is the Amazon. Right. It's jungle. Had a because uh, what's his name uh from New York, uh, Marcelo Garcia's. From Manaus, right? Probably. I'm not uh, sure. I haven't met him yet. He's yeah. one person I haven't met. You haven't met Marcelo? But I know Paul oh. Schreiner teaches yeah. for him, but I've never met. So did you meet Paul out in Cali, or did you meet Brazil. Paul in Brazil? Brazil, okay. Paul used to come to Brazil. He's from Claudio Franson. He's from Santa Cruz. And Paul, Paul's good at surfing. So all the right. Brazilians loved him. Because he lives by Mavericks. So... You know, no Brazilian trying to come to Chicago. Like, where do you live, Chicago? Like, Paul, <laughs> Paul lives. Paul lives in freaking Santa Cruz. I mean, at the all time, all Brazilians want to go there and surf. You know, like, oh, right. Paul, we love you. <laughs> Paul's cool. He, he's super cool, and he lived over there for a couple of years. Paul, and he was good at surfing, so all the Brazilians got along good with him. See, Zito, that's your end. Get good at surfing, man. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm snowboarder. Well, it's not the same. They don't. Like they don't want the snow. They want the beaches. No, dude, if you can surf, they like you over there, dude. Hops and Mora like snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, they like snowboarding though. They go to like yeah. Chile and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They go to snowboarding. All that stuff's cool. I, I don't know. Do anything. Man. I grew up like Michigan. I don't know. <laughs> shit like that, dude. You just gotta commit. Like I, I hear. Sh uh, I hear you can. Uh, you can surf it like up in up in Sheboygan and whatnot. You lure, could lure him into Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, it's not that far away. <laughs> <laughs> the, sure. fi the fine beaches of Shibuya. Yeah. <laughs> One of the guys called me. He's gonna do like some. Maybe they're gonna do um some fundraiser seminar for me. Anton called me. He's been one of my students at my old gym. He called me yesterday, mm -hmm. so he's gonna try and arrange something that could help out. Yeah, because he's we're gonna get this new gym. I'm teaching this ladies karate school. It's so uncomfortable. Like yeah. she's cool and all. It's just I'm not used to being like under under someone else. Like right. That. No, no. I, I mean, obviously, you got to do what you got to do in the circumstances, mm -hmm. right. you know. But, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. definitely not an ideal circumstance, especially having already been a gym owner. Because right? the know? way they teach is so traditional. Mm -hmm. And the way they teach is so untraditional. Right. So what is your what like what do you mean by that? Because I see you, you you know you see me. No, but them like karate, karate is yeah, like standing in line, you know, okay, all this okay. stuff. Like most of it's more like like checking the person. I see. And there's no real sparring. Oh. Our stuff's just like cool, like, hey man, you're cool. Like, let's roll. Right. And they're not used to that. You know, they're like, it's what very you know, chill. It's disrespectful, like to that type of like in I just want the people to be have fun and be friends before they start rolling with each other. Mm -hmm. I rather I think that's a better concept than keep it all like gun ho. Yeah. And then they try to attack. You know, keep them you know, keep them friendly. Right, right. So Is you're you're looking to do because I I I was I've been to your uh, old school, but you had the elevated mat. Is you are you gonna do similar things? Is that what you're looking to do as well? Mm, the new one. Or you're just kind of the just new one's just gonna be a pop up. It's gonna get be a PTG pop up. 
like these restaurants are just popping up and shit. You get, we get a little one. <laughs> I don't. Right. I had a little one. I like it better. The big one, you know, what happens. It, it get too big, and you start having like different clicks. You're talking. The guy's like a hundred feet away. I like talking to a person be like ten feet away. Right. Well, so, yeah. Your your old location. You know, it was the previous little, one was was very intimate. Yeah. More important to me than space is parking. You know, it's always gonna be the same people. And. You know, I can I can market and get a million new people, but it's just gonna be a million new quitters. You know, jiu-jitsu is it's something you got to fill out. Right. And to be honest, you know, we have cold weather over here. It gets 20, 30 below zero. People don't, aren't really down with that. Right. And then they got their girl yelling at them. So yeah, to, to be good in Chicago, that was the thing. That's why I always stay good. Like, we're, we're from over here. That means we got to be super dedicated to be good. Because over there, you could just drive a half hour and be in this place or be in that place or be here. Yeah. Here, you got to be freaking dedicated. And the key is just show up, show up with a good mindset, trying to hurt people. And that's all I try to do. Not I trying to get hurt. I want to train like like Ilio, you know. I'll be like a hundred years old, mm -hmm. coming out training. I think that's cool, you know. Yeah, ta taught a lesson like the like right before he passed, you know. Yeah, that's how I want to go. I don't want to <laughs> be just some dude all like you know old from steroids. A lot of these guys, these champions, are going to be all messed up from all these drugs they're doing, all these steroids. Yeah, it does a number on your endocrine system. Can you imagine that? Like, their kidneys and shit? Like, what, they're all just going to be dead by 60? So, that's what I'm saying. Like, the true metal in life is, is your life. You don't, you know, it shouldn't have a monetary value. So, just try to stay in shape and try and do good, you know. I'm not really in peaking out at this point for one event or anything. I just like to always get better. And that's just a mindset. You know, I had some serious injuries. If I wasn't injured, I'd probably feel a lot different. You know, when you're not injured, you're going to do what your competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it goes or else you become obsolete. You know, if you're in baseball and you're using a wooden bat and all your competitors are using aluminum bats, you got to switch to an aluminum bat. So I'm not a competitor right now, so I, I can't. I can't really say what I would be doing or not be doing. And I'm not knocking them. But someone with some injuries like myself, yeah, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not looking to get super good next month and then see what happens. I just want to keep going, always Con getting better. Right. Constant forward progress. Constant forward progress. And you're going to hit speed humps. That's part of the game. It's PTG is my nickname. Pete the Greek, part of the game. You're going to hit, you're going to hit a speed bump, you know? And then what? I always hit speed bumps. So what? You hit it? You know, sometimes you feel you're getting worse. Yeah, I think we've all hit a plateau somewhere. Uh, always. Yeah, sure. It's part For of sure. the game. You yes. know? And you just keep going. And maybe you got to travel at that point. Maybe you just got to rest at that point. Maybe, you know, just take some time off. And then keep going. And keep going and keep going. And, man, I... Man, look at like the kid Gordon Ryan. He's so good. Holy cow. Even he got injury now. Yeah, yeah, that was a bad one. Anyone could get injured, so you just got to always always keep pushing through it and 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 study and and, and just keep and keep going. And, and nothing easy about this stuff. Like there's a reason why jiu-jitsu is missing. Like there's no it's a it's a tough lifestyle. Look, before 1993, none of us even heard about it. Right. Why? Because there had to be a reason. You know, it's a tough life. Mm -hmm. Just something that doesn't disappear because it's all dandy. So, yeah, there was people grappling since forever. But yeah, if they're in it for the games and the tricks and the medals, it's tough. You know, I look at it like if you have a daughter or something like what is it, the beauty pageant that important? No, you know, you the the main thing is that. You work, you're doing strong. You, you're progressing. It's not about medals or pageants or or anything. The kid's in baseball and he wins the Little League World Series. Who cares? Who cares? You know, you just keep going forward and and try to help people. And I think that's the most important thing is helping people, right? No, I, I agree, man. If I help I, someone, I help myself. It's really easy, you know, like... like we fall into that trap all the time where like, like we measure progress with with stripes and belts and we we measure success in in medals or 
the number of guys we get to sign up at the gym in a month or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. you know, but, but yeah, like that's at the end of the day, that's not what it's all about. No. You know, it's not why we started and it's not why we stay. We're light, you know, we're, shit, we're like a candle just passing on light, you know? And so right now my candles like, is it almost got blown out. Who cares? Cause I, I got the trick. I know how to re- relight it every time. So they could right. blow me out. I don't care. They could blow me out the water. My gym in Chicago could just go bye bye, goodbye, and I can open up another one tomorrow, anywhere, anywhere I want. Why? Because I I know my craft. Is it going to be easy anywhere else? No, it's going to be the same thing. Right. You know, and with, with jiu-jitsu, it's almost sad to say. It's almost like when you have a school for too long. You become an enemy of the state, like I see in all my places. Almost as a person almost better off moving every five years. Because when you stay in one place for too long, what happens? You have all your black belts there. Sometimes not comfortable after a while. Even Carlson has all these black belts in one room. Right. And Eventually, become, someone's going to get pissed. Right. And I mean, that did... It I always did, happens, yeah, and that's just happen. what happens with everyone. If I yeah. sit here and teach someone 15 years, have 15 black belts, I'm at 15, at least like nine enemies in the room. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so it's like what? You just, you know, so a lot of people, that's like, like Maeda, he would teach people. He taught the grades just for a few years. Right, yeah. He, he left. He left. Then he goes somewhere else and leave. Because it's almost like once you ignite them, they can almost do it themselves. It's like, leave me alone. I got it, coach. I know how to cook. I got it. Yeah. But you're like, no, you got to cook it this way. Yeah. And then you're like, fuck you, coach. So it's an implosion and it happens everywhere. And it happens yeah. now faster than before. Before Why? implosion would happen in 10 years. Yeah. Now they happen in four. Because people can promote it faster or what do you think? It's just uh, going to school. Like you go to school here, like you start off in grade school. It's like five years. Then you go to middle school, and that's three years. Then it goes back to four years, and it goes four years again. Mm-hmm. And then master's is two years. So it's pretty much like four years. So people are like in their brain after four years, like, I got this. Mm. Before it was, it was a tenor. But even when you're like a teacher, it doesn't take 10 years to get a tenor anymore. It used to mean 10 years. Right. But now, nah, after like four years, people... They get bored. You're in the same high school for four years. What happens? You're like, fuck this place. Yeah. I want to go to college. <laughs> change <laughs> or, of face, right? Or it's just a change all. of face, and right. it happens. There's nothing personal. Like, I see it. Right. There's nothing personal. It could be the greatest friendships in the world. You know, what usually keeps people together is money. If you could pay, like, the best competitors to stay. Like, that happens, too. Like, a lot of these teams are just buying people. Yeah. Right. We were talking about that a little earlier. About some teams that, you know... If you're a trainer, you either make them or you buy them. Yeah. There's no (laughs) in-between. Yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about. Who makes more money? The guy that buys them, of course, because he's like... Because he's... You be the jag off and teach him all that bullshit, and then I'll just buy him. And take all the credit. And take all the credit, and if he doesn't do well, I'll fire him, and he'll go right back to you. Right. (laughs) So, exactly. So, that's how it goes, like... Example, like, if I wanted the best competition team, I would just go to the local competitions... And find, I would just scout out the fighters and be like, look, dude, they have a certain personality. Like, no one was trying to take me from Carlson. But a lot of guys can get taken. You could tell those person, a lot of people need people to hang on. So they look for that type of fighter, and and you could find those. You just go up to guy, hey, man, you're really good. Why aren't you competing more often? Why don't we see you more? It's always going to be the same answer. Oh, I don't have money. Don't worry, kid, I got you. Come with us. And then yeah. now I, I get like six of those guys. Now my team's on fire. Right. But I don't do it that way. I I keep it old school. I'm like Mr. Miyagi, you know, I just like wax on, wax off. <laughs> you know, I, I can't be buying fighters. Like maybe I'll buy them lunch or something. But <laughs> <laughs> At Chipotle? Yeah, it's just like I can't do that. And, you know, I don't know. I don't have the answer. Like we don't have super gyms in Chicago. Yeah, like, like an auto, so yeah, like we're, I consider a super gym is like where someone will move to to train. So I had my big gym, kind of, but ain't no one moving to Chicago to train with me. They will like move here and then train with me, but move to Chicago to train? Nah, it's not that type of place. But California, you got super gyms like 
I mean, our our weather isn't that different from New York, and you got guys moving. Money over there, dude. That's the fact There's you money think. Money over there, dude. You yeah. could just get a little side job making money. You know, New York's got money. That's the difference. You could be a little personal trainer in New York and be book solid making a hundred bucks an hour. Yeah. Here. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's it expensive, is. but it's not. Fitness is huge in New York City. Huge. So like us type of people can pick up a hustle quick. Because we're in the fitness industry. Right. In New York City, people are looking to, they're so busy, they're looking to buy some type of fitness something, and whatever it is, they'll buy it. Chicago, no way. People are like real here. They're like, how much is it? A hundred dollars? Like a month? (laughs) 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 No, a year, you piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, man. So like New York, yeah, my friends charge like two fifty. My friend Eric, he has he's really famous now. He's one of my my old training partners. Which Eric is that? Eric Owings. He has this. I don't um, know that name. <laughs> what does he have? It's called um, Mushin. He's had a baby. Yeah. Eric's like pretty much. When I moved to Cincinnati with Junior, he was brand new in Jiu Jitsu, and I was I was pretty good. And he was like my main my main friend over there. And now he's over there. I know, like, we were living in Brazil together. I'm like, I'm going back. She said, I'm going to New York, dude. Right. And he just, he made, if he would have tried doing that in Chicago, it would probably be a lot different. Hmm. He's over there, and he's like, yeah, Pete, all my students pay me 350 a month. I never got to call them. He's Must like, be nice. He's like, if they don't, he's like, if they miss their payment twice, they're not allowed back at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wish. Yeah. I got to call these these dudes from different numbers and stuff. <laughs> I got to go to Jewel at night and try and find them at the grocery store. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, New York got that money, and, and San Diego is not that much money. Most people are military, they're just chill. Right. Beverly Hills, Hegan, I know. They got all those Demi Lovato, and yeah. they go to Mulberry Street yeah, Pizza. San, San Francisco, you know, Silicon Denny's Valley. Is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he thought he's expensive, you know? Like, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I've, I've visited. I, I don't live there, obviously, but I've yeah. visited enough to know. I can't live in a place like that. I, I need to, um, nah, cheaper. The, um, that's why, I, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Chicago's cool. It's just, you know, we all get kind of cranky this time of year. It's been, for the people listening, is. It's been cold here for a couple months now. It's been like... Yeah, we... It, it's starting to break. Today was today actually was nice. nice. Yeah. Today was 30s, 40 well, maybe? 40, 44, I think. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, good. it was nice when I walked out the door. So yeah. I'm like, ah, cool. Can wear this hat, not the other one. Oh, we're cool. <laughs> I love Chicago. I can't talk shit about this place. I love it. You know, yeah. like we're... Right. You got the... Everywhere you go, people are wearing Chicago Bulls hats, Air Jordans, all that shit, you know? Yeah, I mean, I lived here almost my whole life. I, one year in Houston, uh, and otherwise I've lived in, you know, in and around Chicago my whole life. And, good. Yeah, I, I love it here, but uh, I can definitely see the appeal of certain other places. Yeah, I can see the appeal. Here's I, tough, I think, you understand, but it's it's stable. <laughs> Here's tough, but stable. Yeah. 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 And the food is awesome here. Here's Mid- the, I love it here. I love when people come here like it's so cold. How do you live here? I'm like, it's not normal. <laughs> I don't even have a, I have my little park on or whatever. Right. It is. Yeah, it's not. Even, I mean, like when people first move here from someplace warmer, mm-hmm. it gets down to like I don't know, 55, <laughs> yeah. and they're freaking out. They're like, oh god, it's so cold. Are we gonna die? Yeah. You know. And it's like, no, no, you ha- you haven't experienced actual cold ever in your life. My ex was <laughs> from Brazil, so it wasn't even my fault. It was too damn cold for her. Right. She's yeah. like 90 degree weather. It's 30 below zero. I'm trying to tell you, you know, <laughs> this is normal to be in the house for four months. Yeah. But jujitsu keeps us, keeps us good. I, I think if I take out the jujitsu, I'd, I'd go insane over here. I think I agree with you on that. <laughs> it definitely keeps me level. I mean, like <clears throat> I'm a hot blooded Italian, like not full blooded Italian, but, but that that's the part that I inherited is my yeah. temper <laughs> uh, of all the, of, of all the things. Um, and like, like being able to grapple really levels me out it's and best. yeah like, like I, I feel like i would be so much more aggressive <laughs> yeah. without it you know like, like road yeah, rage and all that shit yeah, well I, I never had a road rage incident but I, I definitely like i used to get in more fights before i knew how to fight that's for sure mm-hmm. you know before i just do the best man yeah. but you I, know you're not you're not big into like fights like uh street fights right even back in the day nah man not in this country no you're <laughs> <a little> chill. <laughs> 
but you shrimp, <laughs> no, but not this country. <laughs> no, but in Greece, like back in the day, the yeah. cops couldn't even they couldn't even have bullets in their gun. You could just fight. When I was younger, yeah, I fought a lot in Greece. My cousins were reckless. My cousins were Chelios family, like so. Like in Greece, I fought a lot as a kid. I would say like from like twelve to like fifteen, sixteen. But just like, because in the summer, they were just good scraps, though. All like the it time, wasn't yeah. all the time because like we would go there, and my cousins. They would just get so stupid drunk, some of them, and cause trouble. And just they could turn around and see your cousin getting beaten down by like 10 people. <laughs> so you're like, I, I like guess I gotta holding, jump in too. holding him up like by both his shoulders. And, and like Greece and these countries are good at Taekwondo. So like really? they're Taekwondo? Up, they love that stuff. Like Van Damme and stuff. It's like, really? <laughs> <dude." laughs> I mean, let's be honest. In the in the right era, Every when Van Dam was king, eight, no, but he's still king in in Europe, still in Mexico. Yeah, dude, they love that Van. In Brazil too, they love Van Dam, and they're holding him up, just throwing like kicks at him. I'm watching my cousin get beat up. I'm like, nah, man, I gotta fuck some shit up, you know? We gotta fight. And then I, I got this image of of your cousin literally being used as a punching bag. No, and he you got like, the same name as me. He's from over there by the Plains. Peter Lutzel. Yeah, he got beat up real bad and. Some of my cousins get drunk, dude. Like, fucking guys. <laughs> they just, like, they'll just turn around and... and put this oh, they would get so drunk. You know, my cousins, I don't know what to do. But, yeah, I'm not I'm not big on fighting people. Um, like, the fighting causes nothing. It would just, like, if you beat someone up, then you got to worry about... Getting jumped later or, or getting shot. Like, yeah. I remember one time someone... Anyway, sometimes, one time I got jumped and they got freaking messed up and I didn't even know about it like especially around here yeah street fighting in Chicago can get you nowhere nowhere yeah not around here like in California I don't think they even allow that no <laughs> I mean it's not technically allowed Mexico here Mexico <laughs> people get jumped but like they're cool about it like you, you'll see people you'll see someone get jumped they probably deserved it and then like afterwards like hey you know walk up hey you know like, <laughs> they shake each other's hands it's a very different experience then <laughs> yeah it's just like the dude fucked up you know he probably stole something they beat him up real quick you know jumped him for a couple minutes and then like he's cool like, he knows not to do that shit again all right like that's cool to get jumped like that but not over here in chicago jesus christ like if you jump someone then they're like brothers gonna be a cop, their other cousins gonna be a gangster, and then then what? They're like, I know you, you know him, everyone knows everyone. It's like an inbred town. It's not shy city, it's shy town. It's a little <laughs> ass town. Like Jesus Christ, you can find anyone anywhere from anything, especially at Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you I guess that does make it easier these days. I, even before Facebook, they could still find anyone in this town. It's always been like that. Yeah. Well, Peter it's Shy it, Town. It, it, you, you got a different experience though. You know everyone, like like legitimately. Everyone knows Pete the Greek, and you know. I went everyone. to four high schools. <laughs> Israel. My dad had like thirteen restaurants growing up in all different towns, so I knew all. Like we had the place over here, Pete's Red Hots over here. On Is that Roosevelt? name for you? On Roosevelt. Yeah, it's named after me. There you go. I had you no know, idea. Toronto's my friends over there. We had Kings and Queens over there. We had Andreas. Like we, I know all these places. So like, we would flip the restaurant. I flipped the house. You know. Mm -hmm. get a restaurant struggling boom 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 if it takes six months it takes a year it takes five years whatever get it up to speed and then boom so find some, right. someone will want to buy it real quick and then like they'll get all happy they'll make money but it's getting harder to do that in chicago and i was big money out here people are doing that more like in like denver man denver's blowing up denver right now a little hot dog place shy town hot dogs you make big money yeah i bet not over here here yeah. they're like man Shit. Over there, though, you yeah. put Chicago. Denver what about like a money. Maxwell Street in Denver? Big money. Big money, right? Big money. Here, here, it's just like, you know. Do you, you remember Maxwell Street Polish? Of course. Oh, man. You get one of the Portillas so down the way. Good. What are you talking about? No, it's not, not the same. same. Might not the say first one of girls in Chicago. We stole the idea from New York. Oh, really? Wait, wait. I. Euros are from New York? They're I from mean, New York. They're not even from Greece. It's crazy, right? Yeah, I had no idea. I, I mean, I'd grown up my whole life thinking they were just normal Greek food. They huh. put this in the spit. Right, right. Yeah. You know, so like, that's it. I, I know a neighborhood. I went to a bunch of high schools and flipped this restaurant. You know, geez. You show up to a place. You know, most restaurants are just set up wrong. You fix a few things. But now the way people are eating, 
No, nah, it's, it's not so good. It's not a really great business these days. No, it's hard. It's Man, definitely it, hard business. It's funny. So one time uh, I'm up at uh, our team, Deerfield. Me and Barry and, and Tom Grant and, and whatnot are, are hanging out. And, and Dan Conway and, <sighs> and Pete show up. And uh, we're, we're talking. We're discussing technique. We're exchanging some stuff. And everyone's like, hey, let's go to eat. And, like, you know, it's late. It's like, what's going to be open? And, and I think Barry mentions it. He's like, yeah, there's a, there's a little Greek family restaurant down the street, you know, like, like just down the way. Uh, I think they're open late. Let, let's head there. And Pete's like, it's probably owned by one of my cousins. <laughs> yeah, has, no, has no idea whether it is or isn't. He's right, just, right. He just says this. I got to split. You know, I got I, I to gotta go hang out with my family and whatnot. So all the guys go out. The next day I'm talking to Dan about it. And Conway's like, so you remember how Pete said this? Probably owned by his cousin. A hundred percent, it was. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like, like they're mad at me if if I if I see any Greek family. Like, how's the karate going? You know? Oh, really? I'm like, you know, do they do the karate hands at you I'm all the like, time? You jag off. You know, <laughs> fuck you. you know? I tell them you know, these guys are making pancakes, making a lot of money. You know, yeah. I'm changing people's lives, barely surviving. Jeez. I mean, That's pancakes are delicious. But that's that's the way that's the way the world that's goes, the is, you know. Yeah. You, you you feed them poison, they'll pay you money, yeah. and that's <laughs> jujitsu is always going to be like that. It's too hard for the average person. Like, think, think about it. Jujitsu is not for everyone. Maybe in a little intro class to buy a little intro gi, but nah. After six months, it's not for everyone. It's hard. It's hard to get that after blue. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. The blue belt blues is a real thing. It, it is a real thing. <laughs> <The blue belt laughs> yeah. I mean, like I seen it so much. Yeah. It's so hard for me because I'm, I'm one of the ones that stayed. So it's, I have no perspective on right. what it's like, you yeah. know, like, like that's what I need to do. We need to hunt down somebody who like one or the other of us trained with them and be like, I want you on the show. And they're like, I don't train jujitsu anymore. And like, that's why we that's want why you on the show. What happened? Nobody understands what, what goes on in they your mind. You get married and get fat. Well, that, yeah, that yeah like, 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 I've known a couple of guys where it's like big life change. Like I, I had a kid, I got married, you know, I, I got laid off my job. I got injured. Like that's no understandable. Reason but to look but, like that though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. but, but like the ones just, just ghost on you. Like, like you got your blue belt and they just stopped training like yeah. three weeks later. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that either. Or six if, months, if whatever they get it like is. That, the best thing is have some kids and just teach them in their basement. Their kids could be good. They usually know enough to get their like those kind of people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes have the best kids at jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They some, did it when they were younger. They I'm gonna show you this, and their kids just take, some like that. me. I couldn't push the kid to do jujitsu. I did it too much. Right. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll be like, you gotta want to do it. Yeah, but exactly. if I just barely some of the some of the guys that like just quit after their blue belt or purple belt. Those type of guys are like tough on their kids for jiu-jitsu. Like yeah. they'll disappear for years and then you meet their kid like 10 years later like, wow, they did a good job on your kid because it's kind of like they're living Vicariously, through, yeah, yeah. through the kid. And those type of, like someone like Carlson, he never pushed anyone. He would just try to calm me down. Right. He like, you got it, kid. Just calm the fuck down. You know, like, he's not like, <laughs> professional are you going to be advice. able to do this? You know, he's like, no, nah, he wouldn't even do it. He's like, you got it. It's rest you know a lot of a lot of fighters before their fight they like to maybe sleep before their match in mexico mm -hmm. my fighters they like to go in a dark room right relax, just like sit in here and just turn it completely off really that makes your punches harder that's <laughs> what they believe that's what they believe yeah interesting eat pork eat pork before um before your matches just lean pork it tastes like human skin it's more more savage that's Fuck. Literally the most fucked up thing I think I've ever heard on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before your fight, if you're just eating chicken and shit, is not as good as pork. You get some lean pork, you know, like all the Mexican fighters eat pork before their matches. I mean, I am not surprised by this. Uh, the the reasoning kind of surprised me. It's savage, you know. Yeah, that, you ever see how wild a, a pig is compared to a chicken? A chicken barely alive. The way with those chemicals, look at it, it's ready to die. Mm -hmm. The pigs out there. Even crazy, you know, because DNA, you're, you're, you're taking in what you're eating. And I don't care what they're using to, to enhance anything because everyone's using something. Like you look at the horse, you know, when the win the race, you know, say looking at they're all using something. And with the humans, you know, what, what would the Olympics be without performing enhancing drugs? You know, it wouldn't even yeah, exist. I mean, they talk about it all the time. You know, there's records that were set in like the 80s before right. we had as good a testing as we do now that are 
not going to be broken. Michael Phelps' stuff are getting broken by kids now in high school. So just the way it goes, things are different, and they're going to figure out how humans get stronger and stronger and stronger, and every generation should get better. You know, I right, build off the building blocks. Yeah, like right now, Gordon Ryan's the best guy for leg locks. Is he going to be the best guy ever in 10, 15 years? No, no it's going to keep right. going and it's just going to keep going. And, and it's very important. And like you're helping your people, you're helping your people. We're, we're helping our people. And, and hopefully whatever we do it goes to the next level and just keeps going. And then it's cool that way. And it just keeps going. Right. If yeah. not, it shit sucks. Yeah, if you if your students aren't surpassing you at some point, then you're right. probably not doing a good a job, good enough job of, of like, pushing them in and training. My them. students haven't gotten better than me yet, be just because they haven't put in as many hours. But right. for the hours they put in, they're way they're better, better than, than you I were for ever that amount. was. Yeah, I yeah. guarantee you. Like, if I put in two hundred hours, and they put in two hundred hours, they're way better than I was. Right. Way better, just because. Every time you teach, you get better. First thing, when I teach a move, I remember the position. I'm like, oh, shit, that was awesome. And then, and then I get better at it every time. Every time I teach, we get better. There's, there's no way. You know, if you teach a pass, you teach any move. I just, like, right now I'm sticking on taking it back right now. And we were doing a lot of leg locks, but, man, you get some ignorant people sometimes. So I, I kind of ban them a little bit. I was like fuckers having too many injuries or no nah, just like uh, you get leg locks are cool for certain people in my school but when i start teaching them too much mm -hmm. it hurts the average person it helps the better guy and the average guy doesn't he just start jumping for heel hooks i'm like geez you're a white belt you can't do that dude so i try to get them right now i always switch my game to backs and leg attacks I, I switch from back and forth. Yeah, I feel those two feet off each other really, really well. Those are my two. Those are my two favorite moves. Is um, go for the back, go for the leg lock, and and when we do start doing too much leg locks, I'm like, fuck it, we're going for the backs. Do you got a favorite wrist lock from the back that you like to do? Whenever I teach a move, I I finish with a wrist lock. So any sequence I teach is follow is finished with a wrist lock. That way I don't forget, you know, because a wrist lock's not a main course meal. It's more like a, it's a a la carte dessert type of deal. So you can't just serve that as a main meal. So I do like, if I do like a sweep to a guard pass, finish with a wrist lock. It can't just be like, just wrist locks, because that's too crazy. You know, you're like Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, kind of crazy. Do a leg locks. Yeah, that's what, and like when I'm teaching beginners, like, oh, I don't know what to do here. I just tell people, take the back. Like, you know, what do I do from here? Take the back. Oh, what? take the back. Ah, take the back. What did Jitsu mean? Take the back. 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 And then once they start getting good at taking the back, like, yeah, but he's stopping with his arm. Now you're going to go for his arm. Oh, but he pulled his arm in. Take the back. Take the back. Take the back. Oh, you want to surprise him? Leg locks. And then we go to leg locks. Yeah. And I do like the passing leg hug. You know, you pass tight, you pass loose, and you go for submission passing. Your passing is... I pass good. Fucking amazing. I train with, like... <laughs> Jesus shoot. Christ. I went to Brazil. Those little kids are so good at guards. Right. And I was good at passing the United States, but most of the people in the Midwest have, like, the same type of body. It's, like, strong and, like, gah. Like, they're ready to, like... Once you put pressure on them, they're going to try and take you down. But these frickers in Brazil, they grow up doing, like, samba classes. So their hips are all moving... And they're, they're flexible. Like dance you're inverting classes. them. You know what I mean? Like right. You hadn't encountered that prior to going. I to haven't Brazil. encountered that before Brazil. California has that to a point, but these Brazilians, man, you could like, you just like crushing them, and they go in there like you just unwind them. Hmm. And so I learned how to deal with with different bodies over there. That was cool because that, when I first went there, like I would smash them, and then I ended up like getting triangled. But um, yeah, Midwest always got we got tough people here, man. So you always be good training here. I was never like when I would train specifically in Chicago and go compete. I always do fine. Mm -hmm. Always here. Here we're dealing with Midwest. Midwest is the best grab, best wrestling in the world. Like I don't think like Russia is better than than the Midwest. 
Really? No, I'm nah, not Ball State. No, hell, that's, that's, there's no way, dude. There's no way you just bring all those Russian like 20 year olds over here and they smoke the Midwest. Mm-hmm. No fucking way. No way. New Jersey always has like special people. Like they have like they do like some freak shit. Like you'll just see like what the fuck. But these Midwest people are tough. And then um yeah, so we're used to I lived in Ohio. That's like every kid and their mom knows how to do a double leg there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a big wrestling state, yeah. The fuck, dude. I got tough over there. That's where I met Eric and that's who, who was training. was Rich Franklin would come by over there. Hmm. And, and that's, that's basically it. You know, jiu-jitsu saves lives. And if it's for you, you should do it. If it's not for you, don't do it because you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, you know, I... I like healing myself. I like the way my body feels. I like getting stronger. I like being a positive influence in people's lives. The only thing is, yeah, it gets scary. When you, when you meet a lot of these masters, a lot of them are broke. And hopefully that changed. Like I met a lot of them, and, and one thing they have in common is no money. And so hopefully, you know... It, it's because they invest so much time into their students. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. And then eventually the students are going to be like, screw you. I'm, I'm badass. I don't need you. And that's normal. So what I tell the instructors, in, invest time in yourself, too. Mm-hmm. Like, realize that, you know, your, your best guy is, is, you can't put everything. Oswaldo Al was my coach like that. Oh, my God. He treated us all like his son. It's crazy. But he didn't have kids. Right. So that's a lot of things too, but yeah, Oswaldo like super on us. We had to spend like twelve hours a day with him, minimum. If I tell him Oswaldo, I'm gonna go to the mall. He's like champions don't go to the mall. He like curse you. You're like, oh <laughs> shit. So, I I like I like Atos over there in San Diego. It's pretty cool. I go to Victory by Jocko's gym. It's really mm-hmm. cool. You got all the military people there. They're super chill. Atos is more like. Like, with my injuries and stuff, I don't know if I can handle the school at Atos because they're, like, 20-year-olds. They're strong as fuck. Like, they got, jeez, they're, like, all vascular veins popping out of their necks and eyes. Like, <laughs> I could probably do that, like, one day and have to rest, like, for a week. <laughs> you know? It's an intense class. Yeah, so, like, I'd probably train, like, at Victory or, or Atos. And Victory's cool. I like rolling with Jocko. He's cool. Yeah. And... What he's a big school? dude. He's a big dude. How's he roll? He's cool. Yeah. He's cool. And and Glover's my favorite rolling partner ever because he's smaller than me, but my injury is cool. I and mean, he, Glover looks like a, just a rubber band rolling. I mean, she's... Like, if I'm putting too much pressure on him, he'll just lay there and look at me like, what are you doing, you jackass? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, I, so we gauge each other well. Right. And and he's cool. And should I got to see Glover. Glover, I know he like he likes to always stir shit up. Does he? Oh, of course. He's but funny, dude. He's funny. So he's very we're, entertaining. We're doing yeah. a high rollers event. I'm gonna help him with that. We're trying to. Figure When's that out next the one coming up? You know, soon. Are you I'm doing going, one out here? No, we're going over there. Oh, you're going over there. Glover's figuring out the rule set. Didn't he win? He won. But he won. now we're changing the rules. What's what's he gonna do? Well, there are Eddie Bravo rules, but EBI, we're gonna change yeah. it. Oh, what are you guys gonna do? Thinking of doing tenor tap. Glover did that for his other tournament. Like, the first guy to 10 points wins, or if he taps. That's beautiful. I like that. 10 or tap? You just go 10 or tap. Beautiful. It goes, so even if you beat him 10 to 9, you win. Right. First but, to 10. Yeah, first, first to 10. First to 10, not, not a 10-point lead. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So first ten. to 10 wins, or you submit That's great. Like, I like that rule set. It's pretty cool to get people mad, because the thing is, like, um, starting in those submissions, we don't want to get no one hurt. Yeah, because... Yeah, um, Plus, we, we can't just be copying Eddie Bravo and all this stuff. It's too crazy. Well, I think the Eddie Bravo thinks sometimes, you know, people start to stall just to get to the overtime so they can get your back or that's get your arm. That's the best thing to do. Like, yeah. I was fighting ABI, I would just stall out until you get to that and then play a game of death. Right. right. Yeah. But that's every game's in every – nothing can say, but Eddie Bravo is cool. He always gives me – always gives me shout-outs. He's someone you see through the years that gets famous. A lot of people turn to jackass. Eddie's super cool. Mm-hmm. It's super nice to me all the time. And so, yeah, shout out, shout out to you, Eddie Bravo. You keep it real. Because a lot of these people, they're not so nice. And that's why you see he's got a big following. I think the 10th planet he's got over 100 schools. is the strongest. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm pretty much convinced some of you know shit about jiu-jitsu, but 10th planet on their thing, they could, they could actually make a decent living. 
Yeah. I don't think Eddie would give that to someone. I'm just saying the name is strong. Right, right. You put like 10 Planet in New York City, you're getting people. I think we, they just put one. They yeah, just, they yeah, yeah, yeah. They just Absolutely. put one. But I'm just saying, like, that's a strong name. Up. 10 Planet New York City. You're getting 100 people in, in a month. Yeah. I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. There's no way. Yeah. Ray Ray's uh, yeah. out there now. Yeah. You know, 10 Planet Miami Beach. You're getting students. I'm just saying. So it's a big name and well-deserved. And I remember when I met Eddie, he was broke. He was broke. He was teaching out of some karate school. He was pissed. It was like bomb squad. Yeah, that was bomb yeah. squad days. Yeah, I remember. I remember when he did a. You know, they, they did that DVD, The Twister. I was in that. I'm in that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then my friend Cade filmed that. Cade got the the girlfriend. Yeah, what, Adriana no, no. Chechnik. <laughs> That's his girl. And um, Cade Cade's super smart on the video stuff, so he'd hook up Eddie Bravo with all that stuff. But then Cade's just like superpowers on computers. He's like, you know what? Jitsu's going on a side burner. Like he's he's a Caden, his, his brother Scotty from on the mat. These guys were they were like some of the first humans on computers in the United States. Like their parents were like big time teachers. So these were the kids like on computers in freaking seventies. Mm. Right. Uh, they're better off just working <laughs> than trying to do jiu-jitsu because there's money in computers. But I mean Scotty Scotty's jujitsu business is Doing Scotty does jiu jitsu, yeah. His yeah, brother yeah. Kate, I think, is just straight up computers. Just, okay, huh. but he's a black belt from Eddie. Yeah, Kate Nelson. He's cool, yeah. and I don't. I don't think he does Eddie. Now Eddie's on a whole other level, dude. Yeah, uh, Michael does the does the video videography for Michael Plaster for most of the most of like EBI and the matching. Yeah, that's a whole other level now. That's like, and that was pretty. I cornered Toledo and EBI. I remember that was fun. Yeah. What do you think about the combat jiu jitsu? You like that's it? cool, dude. Yeah. I just, I don't want no one, I would probably do that in my school maybe, but I swear if people get eye poked, you gotta watch no one go blind. I don't want to get no one blind with the fingers. Has anyone gotten? No one's gotten. No, I don't think, I don't think I recall an eye gouge yet. Right. We'll just, we'll invite John Jones and it'll happen instantly, but. Exactly. I'm just saying, (laughs) something scary about that is um, if I had it in my school, I don't want no one going blind. But yeah, that's super cool. Combat. I'm, I'm a way better coach for that. I wonder if they'll start making gloves for it, like they just should. like paddle gloves, like like penguin hands. That'd be almost. smart. You know what I mean? It's yeah, called because it's called an oven mitt. Yeah, oven mitt. It's exactly. smarter because yeah, of the eye yeah. thing. No, right, right. One eye to the face, and I lose yeah. my school. I can't teach no more. Of course, more. it's hard to grapple with oven mitts on. <laughs> I, I sure. know. I was just kidding. I, I mean, yeah. Hey, so, Eddie some type do, of some type of gripping. Eddie can mitten. do whatever he wants, dude. He's yeah. a boss. He can do whatever he wants. I mean, you just say you know combat jiu-jitsu and make money. He does anything, um, but combat jiu-jitsu is pretty cool. Yeah, I think that that's his focus now for sure. Because the regular jiu-jitsu gets. It gets too crazy. They start inverting, and there's nothing you could really do. Well, even with the re- – who knows? It's, it's just just growing. You know, the Ryan Hall thing, that's a whole other level right there. Like, who would have thought you could pull that off in a fight like that? I, that's, that was shocking when I saw that. I mean, he's been doing it. I know. Since, he's been doing it since the Ultimate Fighter, he's <clears throat> been I d- I know pulling he's been, off that move. But, but you didn't think he could get it on BJ. I didn't think I yeah. – yeah. and the entry for it was it's really so slick. Crazy, right, that, that's the entry he's been using since Has the Ultimate he, Fighter. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. doing it that like that See, for some reason. It was better. Like That, that was the perfect <clears throat> highlight reel finish. That's yeah. why I hang out with Glover because, like, BJ Penn doesn't hang out with Glover, so he's not ready for no shit like that. If he was hanging out with us, he'd be ready for that. I yeah. guarantee you. Like Glover does that shit, I'll wake up, I'll be I'll be getting out of bed, and he's already jumped on my back like a monkey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I have to keep you ready for anything. He, he's like, <laughs> note to yourself: do not room with Jeff Glover. <laughs> no, he's a bad little kid. He'll he'll try and attack someone, especially if I'm injured. No, but he's cool. But he keeps me ready for like all that inverted stuff. Glover does all that. Yeah, and he learned it. Like Ryan Hall's one of our good friends, and and that's that. And, and respect to him, BJ Penn. He was just at my school. He's cool too. It's just a it's a different type of grappler. One's a heavy hips, and one's inverted. You know, and this time the inversion beat the heavy hips. Yeah. Because when BJ Penn, he's not that dangerous on his feet passing, but when he gets his hips down, he's tough. Yeah, he's he's got real good low passes. He's he, heavy hips. I, I mean, I remember the first time I ever saw him Whoa. do like the like the dope mountain pass. Well, that's what Eddie calls it, where where he like leg weaves through he mounts. Yeah, right to mount, right to yeah. mount. You ain't get him off mount. Yeah. No yeah. way, no way, no, no way. So like he's really good at that pass, and yeah, but yeah, like I said, unless you're hanging out with Glover or like Ryan Hall, you ain't gonna be ready 
MMA fighter, no way. None of these guys in Brazil are ready for that Ryan Hall stuff or any of that. He'll what, do you think, what, do you think, what about Crone? He's good. I like Crone. Do you think Crone is ready for a Ryan Hall? That'd be a good fight, huh? I, 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 I think they're going to put Crone. Oh, no, they're both in UFC. That'd be cool. I mean, they're both on the same weight. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are asking for it already. I don't know that I want it. Crone is kind of Crone's premature for that. Second UFC fight, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, the, the, the advantage has to go to Ryan Hall in that for, for more experience. Mm -hmm. Crone would, could probably win, but. But they're probably gonna put that fight, dude. They hate jujitsu, dude. They always want to. They always want. <laughs> they're, they're, like they're not gonna. Let, they'll put that up. There'll be a fight. I think. I, I think Ryan will fight a really smart fight. I mean, Ryan always fights a smart fight. You mm -hmm. know, and, and he's always gonna try to figure out the the optimal strategy to win against a given opponent. And I think that's gonna be an ugly fight. Like it's every, be the same every, thing, no? Yeah, I, I don't. I think everyone I think so. wants it to be some crazy jujitsu war. And I don't think he's gonna. I, I don't think that would be the strategy. Crone, to go Crone's not gonna fall for Crone. like a inverted. Maybe not, huh? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's a tough one. <laughs> I'd like to see Gary Tonin versus uh, versus one of them too. Yeah, that would be yeah. good too. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, either Ga way, Gary and Gary and uh, and Anything. Crone did the match in in uh, ADCC in China ago. years ago, and, yeah. and and Crone came out on top. And mm. I don't think they've matched up since then. Right. So I, I'd like to see them on the same mat in some capacity. But I think if if Gary was going to go against Crone, he's going to stand up more than anything. Crone's stand up wasn't that great. I think Gary's <laughs> might be a little bit more polished. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> I think they, I think they're still learning their <laughs> that part of their craft. Yeah. That, but, that's what happens. You know, you, it's a full circle. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a full circle. Like the IBF champ is not going to be the UFC champ. No, yeah, no, no way. Like. I, I hang out a lot with Dominic Cruz, and he always talks about he likes beating up jujitsu people because they like kind of like in a, an MMA context. Yeah, we're talking because here. a jujitsu guy like kind of pretty much gets the cliff notes day one. Like day one, they learn how to choke someone out and kill him. Mm -hmm. A wrestler doesn't learn that day one. They're like they're grinding for years before they learn a chokehold. They're like, oh, they're doing duck walks and all types of shit. So like. They probably never even learn how to choke someone for like never. Who knows? Like a wrestler could be on IO wrestling and still not know how to choke someone. Right. But in jujitsu, the kids like, here you go. You're learning triangle chokes. You're learning all this right. stuff. They want. So like, when you beat them and they don't have their cliff notes and you punch them in their face, you're like, oh, all right. They didn't really work hard for a lot of jujitsu people. Yeah. That's because they got the cliff notes. It's like they got the cliff notes to martial arts. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting punched in the face, the cleft notes aren't always the answer. It's got to be like strong will, hard training. Right. And a lot of other martial arts do. I'm not saying they're superior to us. I'm talking about the getting punched in the face part and not right. giving up. If you punch some of these IBF champs in the face once, they're quitting, dude. Did, they're didn't quitting. someone you know famously say that you punch a black belt in the mouth once, they turn it's, into a brown belt? And then yeah. they go purple, and it goes all the way down, and it's true. And it, with jujitsu, for sure. You heard that one before? Zuka? Carl's you know always say that, man. He punch yeah. it, punch that fucker in the face. That's like a lot of moves in jiu-jitsu involve like six steps. Like Carlson wasn't down with that. He likes like two-step moves, tops, like bing, bing, maybe three, like in boxing. One, two, three, move. Not one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, yeah. So same thing with jiu-jitsu. Like you do your one, two, three. If you move on to something else, you're going to get hit in the fucking face. Like everyone says like a guard is... Is this thing about a true guard is defending your face mm -hmm. from getting punched in the face? Like that's what a guard, like in the old days, like someone knocks you down, they're trying to beat you up. Like you come out, your face okay. You're gonna get hit in the ribs. You're going to. Like there's no way to defend all that. But right. you come out, come out, boom. You're looking good. That you just have a good guard. Mm -hmm. You know the guard isn't so much like. Now guard is someone put you down in a fight and is trying to beat you up, and you come out like, what's up, dog? Cool. Yeah, no, I I mean like my my focus in in grappling is mostly sportive. I'm mm -hmm. interested in self defense. But but you know, I, I, I train a little bit with MMA and, and like a big part of that is just keeping it real. You know, like like there's a lot of shit that I know I can get away with when no one's hitting me. Mm -hmm. Closed guard, for example. Like yeah. someone stands up in your closed guard and you keep it closed. Yeah, in a right. real fight they're gonna be like Bah Right, yeah. Bah. But you don't have to do that, but, you know, train simulate, stand up to start, and the guy knows, open it. Like, I tra I came up in different time as Pride Fighting Championship when I was a kid, so that was our only focus was that stuff. Right. I mean, I, I remember, you know, 
back at Bloomingdale Martial Arts, there wasn't a no gi program, but there was gi jiu jitsu, mm -hmm. and there was volley tudo class. Yeah. So like that was that was pretty normal back then. You know, you get a bunch of guys doing jiu jitsu, and a bunch of guys would stick around and you know just wearing some bad boy shorts. <laughs> and That's it. Five years old. I used to train with Carlos, and he talked about that. Like mm -hmm. um, when he was training them for jiu jitsu versus luta livre, he put them two minutes on their back, and he was trying to fuck them up. Mm -hmm. Not closed fist, you know, whatever. Right, just Not slaps. Trying to, you have to know how to train. You can't be as stupid like trying to give brain damage to a person. But you're doing it real stuff, and and that's how they all learn that stuff. All the tough, and then those guys became super tough in sports jitsu too. They were already tough, but then after learning how not to get hit in the head, the confidence gets. For sports jitsu, for example, I remember my coach told me junior back in the day. He's like, "Look, Pete, I don't care how good you are on the top. You need to be able to play on the bottom." And sweep anybody, and then once you develop that, then then it's way more fun, because a lot of guys just like to play on the top. But jujitsu is the guard, dude. That's that's what um that's what separates jujitsu from any other martial art. So separates from wrestling from anything is you're on your back and you could be good. So I'm I, I like the guard. You know, but guards get leg lock too. You need to do a lot of leg locks. There's a lot. I, I, I'm known to leg lock occasionally. You know, so, you know, leg locks, you have to keep your feet inside. You know, a lot of these guys keep their legs outside. It's just pummeling your legs, pummeling your arms. A, a lot of people don't understand that. It's keeping their hooks inside. Mm -hmm. and if you want to, like, reposition your guard, you can't be, like, throwing it over in front of the guy's face. You got to get him under the person, get him inside. And so little adjustments like that, a lot of jiu-jitsu people are not willing to do. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, how, that's how I pressure test stuff. You know, like, if, if it doesn't work in more than one context, I don't want to over-focus on it. Never. Yeah. That's why I wish I could do it bearing bolo, but I can't over-focus on it. I'd rather teach you guys leg locks. There's too many other things to focus on. I wish I can do that. But our guys in Chicago aren't that flexible. Their backs are stiff. <laughs> California people are flexible. They're mostly vegetarian. It's warm outside. They do yoga since they're kids. Yeah. You know, these guys here play like football. And, and we eat pizza. We eat pizza. So, you know, you have a, yeah, you pizza eat, makes you stiff. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. To invert. If you, yeah, yeah, no. To I, invert, you can't really have that. Nothing. I got... I'm not knocking anything. I, I, I like to see everything just keep going forward. And, man, all the best people, they deserve what they got because this is a tough, tough sport, you know. Um, even, like, the world's best grappler, like Bouchesha or someone, I'm sure he's not even a millionaire. It's crazy. Like, you'd be, like, the best in something. Yeah. And not even be a – like, there's no other anything in the world you could be best in the world. If you're the best plumber in Chicago, you got millions. <laughs> it's true. It's a good point. Millions. Yeah. If you're the best grappler in the world, you're lucky to have a house. How crazy is that? And it's pretty crazy. So, like, does everyone just keep things in the perspective? We're trailblazers right now. Eventually, it's not going to be like that. Right. And so, just understand, like, the struggles we're going through aren't really for us. It's going to help us, but it's more for the next. The next, the next generation. Right. Maybe They'll not. get it. Yeah. Maybe the next next, like yeah, you said. Say, maybe not the next, but right. like yeah. we're not Capone's grandchildren. We're like great great grandchildren <laughs> here, <laughs> you know. So it will be the next next. It'll be the Capone's next 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 grandchildren that'll be good in, in Chicago Jiu Jitsu. And to everyone out there in uh, California and stuff, you guys are cool. Come freeze with us, <laughs> <laughs> Peter. You gonna show us some uh, some moves after the podcast? I could. Where yeah. in the place? Yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah, let's I don't have any clothes. Let's have a. It's okay. We do no gi. Yeah, do. Some. I don't have much more to say. I just want to tell everyone I love you all, and um, I'll show a couple wrist locks or something. Perfect. Keep training. I know everyone. Everyone's always complaining about some shit, but you know what? Just show up to class. That's it. And if you're training a lot, like a lot, a lot, the secret weapon, uh, secret weapon is rest. You know, if you're training when you can, just train as much as you can. But if you're training a lot, don't forget to rest because that's when injuries happen and people catch ringworm and stuff when they're too tired. So keep your immunes up. And what else we got here? These guys, thank you so much for having the podcast. Uh, very comfortable.
Pleasure. Hey, look, just to well, remind everyone, so the GoFundMe still active? Yeah, GoFundMe still active. It's called Wrist Lock the Fire. You can just Google it. It's put like Chicago Fire Jitsu. You'll find me. We raised about eight thousand dollars in about a month. Um, locally, one of my old students, Anton, he's, he has a school, and he's going to be talking to some other some other school owners and do some type of fundraiser. That'd be cool. But um, yeah, it's expensive to open up a gym, and. It's still cheaper than opening up a restaurant or something. So <laughs> that's for sure. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Geez, yeah. like these Definitely restaurants. Definitely less equipment. They want like hundreds of thousands of dollars. This, Sorry. you know, I'm I'm asking to try to get the thirty thousand. If we get it, we get it. If not, we'll figure it out. It's jujitsu, you know. And um, if you're looking for a fancy place to train, you know, good for you. Most of the people you learn from train in some place in Brazil that probably smells bad. So, <laughs> you know, don't even worry about where you train or whatever. You're trying to. Um, it's the people. And you, you, I guarantee you, if you're trained, you make your best friends in the world on a mat. Because if you don't even touch someone or grab them, it's a different type of connection you have with them. And what else we got here? Um, so, shout uh, out to the world. Wrist lock the world. And um, Shoyro and all the people. Um, they're going to make my geese and Scotty and, and all you guys from the podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, Grapplers all. Union pa Podcast. Javier Palomo, how do you pronounce it? Palomo. Palomo and Anthony Zito. It was a pleasure. Just Zito. <laughs> Zito, all right. Yeah. Now, thank you for coming on. And yeah, hey, uh, what up? people want to get in touch with you. What's the best way? Facebook, Instagram? Instagram, Instagram I'm um, Pete the Greek Jitsu. Facebook, we got a Facebook page. It's real, I don't know exactly, it's like Real Jitsu Chicago. And uh, my website, RioJJ.com. Wrist Lock the World. I had everything ready, but it burned in the fire. So that'll be out soon. Uh, Chicago, we got a bunch of people on to come up here in the Midwest. And um, you'll see some top grapplers soon, I think. Like the next generation here is going to be super tough because all the instructors here are awesome and paving the way. And we got the... High Rollers, that's the next event I'm going to at Glover. Yeah. Sounds cool. Mm. Until next time, guys. Awesome, man. <laughs> Pete, appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. All right we'll see you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. For more information about Grappler Union Podcast, you could visit us at our website at GrapplerUnion.com. You can follow us on Instagram at Grappler Union. Please like us on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And all of our episodes are available on our YouTube channel. Say what? Be sure, be sure to subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe to all that shit. <laughs> um, you got to do another take, right? Oh.